Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we are doing the Spark Something Shell Challenge, which has given me the absolute worst headache over the past like week that I've been trying to do this. And I finally was able to figure something out and actually get a shell together. But oh boy, this took forever. The shell challenge is actually closed at this point. It was due actually yesterday, the 6th for me. So I know I'm posting this a little bit late, but I did get it up on the gallery uh, before. Not that it really matters because I already have all of the packs, so I don't need to win anything. But I still figured that this would be a fun challenge to do because it is certainly a challenge. So for this challenge, the rules are a little bit different. Um, you are actually allowed to add exterior walls. You just aren't allowed to remove walls and you can change those half walls on top of the room, move the stairs. You know, it's a little bit different than a typical shell challenge, but it was still incredibly difficult. And I'm really glad that they did it that way because I honestly don't know if I could have done this shell challenge otherwise. So for this challenge, I went for a much more modern and almost slightly industrial aesthetic. Um, I felt like it fit the very strange plumb bob shape of this house very well. And I also added, I think I had two bedrooms and two bathrooms by the end of it. And I imagine that this sim is probably really into entertaining and they have their friends over a lot. There's like this really nice backyard area and a really big dining table and living room. So it's definitely a space that I think a sim could have a lot of people over. You also may notice that we skip around a little bit, like right now we skipped to me having already placed a little bit of filler furniture and already having done the floor plan. That's just because I spent forever trying to get this floor plan done and trying to figure something out. I bulldozed this multiple times and still it just took forever to try and do it this final time. So I figured you guys didn't want to watch me mess around with it for ages and I cut it out. Plus, you may also notice that this video is already pretty long and I don't know how I'm going to be able to talk for the entire time, but I will hopefully figure something out. You also may notice that I sped this video up a little more than I normally do. Again, that's just because this build took me forever. I spent forever trying to decide on things and I needed to speed it up a little bit so this video wasn't like two hours long. Originally, I had tried to do this in real life or I guess live building with you guys but it was just taking so long and my voice was really tired and I was running out of things to talk about plus this video would have been an absolute beast to edit down. So hopefully in the future I will be able to do some live builds with you guys but this one just did not work out because it was taking way too long and it was way too difficult for me. So as you guys can kind of see the exterior is coming together. I still haven't painted it but I do believe I do that very soon. And I kind of had this weird shaped upstairs area that ends up having a bathroom, a master bedroom, and an office. And then downstairs, I did like a guest bedroom and a guest bathroom. And then the rest of it is fully open plan with a, you know, living room, big dining room, and a kitchen. There's also this really cool backyard area that has this kind of interesting shaped platform patio that ends up having a table on it. And then also this beautiful pool. And I think this ends up being a pretty cool house for the weird shape. There isn't any CC in this build, but it does use a lot of packs. I may have used like every single pack for some random reason, but there isn't any CC in it. So if you guys have a lot of the packs, you should be able to download this just fine without having to download anything else. And you can just replace the stuff you're missing with other stuff from the game. I did end up adding these really cool waterfall things. I'm not sure what pack they're from, but I think they look really cool on this build and they flow down into the pool and I think it adds... A little bit of something extra to this build and makes it look very cool and very modern. I also have this semi covered area here where the table ends up going and I just did a kind of trellis over the top of it to try and give some shade and again some more visual interest to the outside. The floor plan for this build ends up being a little bit weird especially for the downstairs bathroom and the office that ends up being upstairs. Uh, that's just kind of what happens when you have a weird diagonal build like this. You end up with some really weird walls and weird shapes, but I think it works out okay and I think I made pretty good use of the space in the end. Later this week, I also plan on posting my version of the Simsy Shell Challenge, which I recorded probably almost a week ago now and I just haven't edited or done a voiceover for. And this one was due sooner, so I wanted to get this one up as soon as possible, but that one will be coming hopefully on Saturday if I can get it done. I do have my finals right now and with the holidays it's just kind of been kind of 
difficult to get everything done. That's why this build didn't go up until today, even though I did this actual build probably five days ago now. But I am trying to do a little bit simpler videos or pre-record a little bit for everything I have going on in real life. So hopefully you guys will still be able to see some of my subpar videos. I also think that I am slowly starting to get better at voiceovers and filming videos and actually recording things in a halfway decent way. So hopefully, especially going into the new year, you guys will see an increase in video quality for me and this will be content that is actually bearable to watch. I know not a lot of people see my videos, especially right now, but hopefully you guys that are here will really enjoy it and stick around a little bit. I have said this before, but I don't really have any huge ambitions for this channel, but it does feel really nice to have people watch my videos and actually appreciate the time that I really do try and put into these videos for you guys. I am also thinking about starting a short lifespan version of the 100 baby challenge, which I think would be absolute chaos and also a really fun time. I think I might have to change the rules a little bit, but I think it would still be really fun and really chaotic and something that I would really enjoy and not get bored with. And I think it also would be something really enjoyable to watch because it would be so absolutely chaotic. So let me know what you guys want to see in the future from this channel because I'm really still trying to figure this whole YouTube thing out and uh, this is only one of my first few videos and hopefully things will get better and easier for me and I will also figure out the kind of content you guys are really interested in seeing. I would also love to know if you guys are interested in me doing face cam on my videos so it feels more like we're having a conversation or if you guys are here just for the builds and have very little interest in me and what I'm doing. I am not going to be upset either way, although I do like the idea of really connecting with you guys and being able to almost feel like we're having a conversation by me being on screen. I used to do a lot of streaming on Twitch with uh, different kinds of games, more like horror games. I used to play a lot of Phasmophobia when that was big. And so I'm kind of used to having my face on the screen for that kind of thing. But streaming is really different from a YouTube video. I think for a lot of people, streaming is scarier because it's not as manicured, but honestly, to me, YouTube is scarier because you can really see how a video is doing and what people are responding to, and there's just a lot more pressure. So back to the video for a second, I was really struggling to figure out what kind of color scheme exactly I wanted to go for. I painted the entire exterior and then painted the interior kind of similar colors. But then I was really struggling because I didn't want everything to be super plain and black and white as far as furniture and I did not know what cabinets to use. I actually cut out quite a bit of me going through all the different cabinets in the game and trying to pick something but I did show you guys a little bit of me having a lineup of a few counters and eventually settling on these guys. Also, hopefully the filler furniture does not throw you guys off too much. Um, all of the furniture that you guys are seeing besides the cabinets currently is just temporary and was to try and help me get an idea of what I wanted to do for the floor plan. Like I said, I spent forever trying to figure out a floor plan and a color scheme for this build and I spent way too long picking every single item I ended up going through. But I am really proud of this build and I really like the way it turned out in the end. I feel like a lot of people were really disappointed that this was a shell challenge because Maxis was kind of hyping up something and acting like there was going to be something really big that was being announced and a lot of people I think expected kind of a holiday update like they've done every year for the past however many years The Sims 4 has been around and so the fact that we just got a shell challenge, although fun, was kind of disappointing I think to a lot of people, which I totally understand. I was a little bit disappointed too, but I still think this is kind of a fun community thing. I do though wish that we had gotten, you know, a cool holiday update and some cool little holiday things. Like last year, we got those really cute aprons and some food items to put on your tables and that kind of stuff. But a shell challenge is fine, although the community already does so many shell challenges that it's not anything that special. If anything, it's just painful and difficult. I think it was also kind of disappointing that some people just felt like they couldn't participate in this challenge because they're not really people that enjoy building or feel like they're good at building, which I think anybody can participate whether they think they're good at building or not, but it doesn't change the fact that some people just don't enjoy building and they want to do things in create a sim or they want to do gameplay things. And updates that have stuff like the little aprons and the food items, even though those are technically build elements, they're still like really cute things that you can add to a house and look at and enjoy, even if you're just 
not a builder. You know, you don't have to be a builder to add some aprons to your Sims kitchen or a little cake thing on the counter. And I would also think with the base game going free recently that they would have done something really special and really big for the first big update after the base game went free. Because as far as I can remember, everything that has released since the base game went free has just been either advertising for EA with the Mass Effect stuff or has been bug fixes, which this game desperately always needs. And I know we have the new life stage coming in the beginning of 2023, hopefully, but I still think it would have been nice to just get like a little Christmas thing in this game. I know I would have really appreciated even just like a little Christmas sweater that isn't as ugly as the sweaters we got at the very beginning of The Sims 4 releasing. I know it seems like I have a lot of bad things to say about this game, and you know, honestly, I do. I have a lot of bad things to say about the company behind it, but I also really do love this game, and I just want to see the game I love do well and have great things and be constantly updated. I think I really just miss being excited about this game like I used to be when I was a kid or when this game first came out. I used to be so excited about it, and now it just kind of feels meh to me, and I want something good. I will say that I am really excited for Infants to come out, but I know that it's going to be a buggy mess like all of the recent Sims releases have been, and it's just not going to be as good as we all want it to be, and it just really makes me sad. At this point, I feel like so many people have just kind of given up on The Sims 4 and are waiting for The Sims 5, and people are bashing that too. So at this point, I don't even know what to think, and I just kind of hope that The Sims 5 is better and that maybe The Sims 4 can be redeemed at some point, although I don't think that is very likely. Like I said before, I am really excited for the baby update. I'm just hoping it won't be super glitchy and buggy, and I think it could actually really get me back into gameplay and a lot of Simmers back into gameplay. I just think that it could also go really bad, especially with what we've seen since my wedding stories. Everything has just been going downhill really, really fast and been super, super broken. I would really, more than anything, rather just have Maxis go and fix all of the bugs from previous things and, you know, make Dine Out good and make my wedding stories good instead of release new content. That's not to say I'm not excited for babies and I'm not excited for the future and what might come out next year, but I would really like for Maxis to go back and fix the things that they never fully released in working order from the past. Anyways, speaking about things that might be happening in 2023, I am really, really hopeful that with the release of Better Babies that they will also do something like a Generations Pack. I know there's been a lot of speculation about a Generations Pack since the very beginning of The Sims 4. Everybody has wanted that in a farming pack, but I really think this would be a good time to release something like Generations, and I'm really hoping that EA doesn't miss this opportunity and just not release anything. I am just like really dying for more family gameplay stuff and stuff for elders and stuff for babies and toddlers because I feel like we do not have enough. If anything, I feel like all of the other life stages besides adult and young adult are completely neglected in this game and there's really not anything super unique. I know we recently got the high school years pack for teenagers, which did add a lot and I think that that's a lot better. But in The Sims 4, teenagers pretty much have the same access to everything that young adults do anyways, and so I don't feel like they are all that unique. I do really think, though, that toddlers and children and elders need more content in this game because they are so boring and there is nothing to do with them. Especially for children who have literally four aspirations and are like super boring, they can play and not really do a whole lot without mods especially. And I find that elders are pretty much just like adults, except for they get tired faster and that's pretty much it. To be honest, by the time my sim is an elder, I'm sick of them and I just am kind of waiting for them to die. A lot of times I make the elder lifespan in my game last only like three days because especially with bonus days, they end up lasting forever. And no offense to my sims, but I'm tired of them by that point. Just die already. There's nothing for them to do. I think that's honestly why short lifespan is like the absolute best for me. That's why I want to do the 100 baby challenge with short lifespan. One, because I think it would be absolutely terrible and chaotic and a lot of fun at the same time. But also, I don't want to have elders. I'm sick of them. I also just, I don't know. I think it's so much more fun to have an actual challenge in this game because otherwise there's just nothing to do. There's, it's just, it's just, it's boring at times. I am hoping to have a video up though pretty soon of creating a founder for the 100 baby challenge 
which I think will be a super fun little cast video and hopefully I'll also be able to do a nice little starter build for that sim and we will see where it goes from there. I am, like I said, a little bit busy right now. I am absolutely drowning in my finals and I'm also going out of town the 21st through the 28th to go and visit family for Christmas, but Hopefully, at least before the new year, I'll be able to get up at least the create a sim and then we can start the 100 baby challenge in 2023. I would also love to know what you guys think about me doing face cam for a let's play like that and what you guys think about seeing my reactions and that kind of thing. I know I keep talking about face cam in this video and asking you guys what you think, but I am self-conscious, okay? I am allowed to ask for validation if I need it. I have just been putting like so much time and so much effort into these videos and I hope you guys are genuinely seeing an improvement. And I think that's why I'm like so worried about what you guys think and if you guys actually like these videos because I feel like I am pouring my heart and soul into these videos and I want you guys to really feel that and see that and enjoy watching these things. Anyways, talking a little bit more about this build, I did this office orange and this is the weird shaped room or at least one of them that I was talking about. Um, I know it's a little bit of a strange shape, but I still think it turns out being a really nice little office space. I just tried to get as much little clutter in here that I possibly could. There's really no skill building items besides the computer, but I always make my sims writers, but I do think this sim is probably like a writer or maybe even like a video editor or does some kind of like podcast stuff like that where they're just at their computer all the time. I thought about making them a photographer, but then I was like, uh, I don't really have space for any kind of like green screen or photography equipment. And I didn't want to just like pile it in a corner to where it was only decorative. So I just stuck with the computer and then this little bookshelf and I put some of the little writer things from City Living, I think is where they're from, in here and kind of called it good there. I also did cut out all of the bathrooms from this build because like I said, it was ridiculously long and this video was going to be ridiculously long. So they are in the screenshots, but hopefully you guys don't mind that they are not in the speed build. They are pretty simple, but I just didn't think that they were worth the time. And of course, they're really not that interesting. They're kind of just the same bathrooms that I always end up doing. I did end up using more of the everyday clutter kit stuff in this office because I am just obsessed with it. I think that is the best kit we have gotten so far. And if you are against kits and you're set on never buying a kit, I would really urge you to maybe consider if you do ever decide to think about buying just one kit. Get the everyday clutter kit. It is so good. It is so worth the five dollars. I know five dollars is too much. I agree, but I just I really think it is so cute and definitely worth it. I will say that I am someone who has absolutely sold their soul to EA and unfortunately I have every pack and I'm not planning on stopping anytime soon. I know not everyone is fortunate enough to be able to do that and I am really thankful that I am fortunate enough to be able to do that. But um, I will have a video coming out pretty soon, hopefully, about all of my favorite kits and all of my favorite packs for The Sims 4 and what I actually recommend buying. And believe me when I say that there are some packs that I really do not think are worth the money. Anyways, we are reaching the end of the video here, so I hope you have enjoyed, that you have a beautiful day today, know that I'm proud of you and you are loved. Have a great day, loves. Bye.